All right, earlier I asked the candidates if they would accept a position on the Board of Supervisors if they were elected student body presidents. Now we'll give them the opportunity to respond to that question. So each candidate will now have a 45 second rebuttal. And again, the question was, if elected, would you accept that seat on the Board of Supervisors? And the first response will go to you, Brooksy. Um, just to further reiterate, reiterate my earlier answer, I take pride in the fact that this is something that differentiates both me and Chris from the other candidates, that we are ready to reach out past the LSU community. And as much as we'd like to do here on this campus, we have to make a face for Louisiana State University Agricultural and Mechanical College. We can't just sit in our offices. We can't just sit on campus with the students. We have to appropriately take the feedback we receive from these students and talk to other members of Louisiana and those people who are powerful enough in order to help us through these tough times. All right, Theo. Um, well, well, speaking about what Brooksy also said and reaching out to students from other universities, I have reached out to students at Southern. I have reached out to the SG president at Southern. I have reached out to senators at Southern. I have reached out to the SG president at ULL, to, to, student, by, to student government officials at ULL over this past year. We are, my administration will be ready to move on contacting the rest of the schools at, uh, in the state to make sure that we represent them as well as Louisiana. And like I said before, we will be representing the students and only the students. All right. Theo brings up an extra, uh, excellent point. This past year, he did not serve as student body president. He served as the assistant director of external affairs, which means he was able to reach out to those schools without holding a board of supervisors position. So that's one stance that me and Danny will take, that we will stand here, we will reach out to other schools without having to be on the board of supervisors. And one thing that I believe that Brooksy brought up is she wants to ensure that LSU has a voice on that board. We're going to ensure that LSU has a voice on that board. We're not gonna give it to another school. I think that would be a very bad decision. But one thing that we will do is choose a student to be a very good liaison to me and Danny, that we will sit down and speak with that person and ensure that the student, uh, student body opinion here at LSU is implemented into the Board of Supervisors. Lastly, one of the administrations that had taken that role about two years ago, three years ago, the student body president did not do anything on LSU hands-on. They worked with the Board of Supervisors only. Do you want that next year? I would think that you would not. I think you need a student body president here, you need a student body president working for you, and then you need a liaison to the Board of Supervisors. All right. Our next question is, if you were not sitting on this panel, who would you vote for for student body president and why? We'll start off with Brooksy. If I were not sitting on this panel and I had to choose between one of the candidates sitting by my side, I would vote for Jay Hudson because I definitely value his experience factor and I value his passion for the students and his outreach and the efforts he has made in contacting the students and trying to get their input. And I really admire his work ethic and his passion and I wish him the best of luck. Okay, Theo. Uh, I would actually vote for the, the counterparts that aren't here, the two kings. Uh, even though some people take them from a, for a joke. If you listen to some of the things they said, it's actually true. And they're actually speaking the opinion of the average student at Louisiana State University. So I would definitely look into, into what they're saying and I would definitely place my vote for them because they do represent the average student. And that's something uh, my ticket is, has uh, reached out to do. Just represent the average student on this university and be real with, with, our, with our peers and let them know exactly what's going on. All right. If I were not sitting on this board, it would be a very hard decision. I don't think I would vote for the two kings, to be honest with you, because they didn't even show up to the last debate. But uh, one thing I do want to put out there is that these two candidates sitting beside me, or across the stage from me, um, have very good factors with them. Theo has great ideas. I feel like that we are very much more online on the major issues. Brooksy does have the experience factor, and I do view that their initiatives are better. But at this point, especially with the class gifts project uh, being one of my main prerogatives in the budget cut issues, which I know Theo has worked on because he was my assistant this past year, I would have to vote for the Williams Williams ticket. Okay, insightful info. Next question submitted to us online by Michael Semino. We are here to go to school and get an education. We've talked a lot about budget cuts, going green, and the Board of Supervisors, but what will you do if elected president to help students out with their academics? 
that question. First, we'll go to Jay Hudson. Okay, with academics, academics is the main reason why we're here. Uh, one thing that we're questioning, again, is the teachers and the classes that we're going to have. Because I'll tell you right now, I'm a double degree major, so when I am going to schedule my classes, I have to schedule very, very strict classes so I can make sure that I graduate on time. So one thing, like, again, we're going to advocate that we continue to have the same resources as we have this past year. And like I said, the LSU student government proposal on the budget cuts is the way to go to continue that. Uh, the rest of the academics is extending the drop time for classes. Uh, one big thing, this is what we want to advocate for students because I do not feel personally that we have enough time to actually find out what a class is actually about before dropping it. Is this a feasible idea? Yes. The question of feasibility comes in when you add a class a little bit later. That's a problem, but when you drop a class a little bit later, then it is feasible, um, and we think that it's something that we can definitely initiate. Um, but w the last thing that I would like to touch on is teacher evaluations. You know, I believe that every person in here, every person that's watching this has filled out a teacher evaluation for one of their teachers. What has happened with those teacher evaluations? Do they get summarized up and they're given to the teacher and they get to look at it and say, oh, good job, or do they get to look at it and say, oh, I've got tenure, it doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing that needs to be done is we need to look at the accountability of those. If we're going to take the time to fill those out for every class, then we need to see the results from them. So what we've actually wanted to do is uh, put those online, not put every individual evaluation, but put the averages on the things like, is your teacher prepared, one through five, you know, what the average is for that, so you know exactly what your teacher is before you actually take them. Okay, Brooksy. I think um, rearranging the ad drop date is a great idea, but members of my staff have been in contact with administrators on this topic and have come back to me and told me that it's just not feasible because the way it's currently set up, it's set up around the course schedule and it takes into account breaks and winter session and everything is a puzzle piece at LSU and the scheduling for the entirety of the year, it's not only about the semester. And if we are to move back the add date and the drop date, it wouldn't work for the student's schedule because then they would not be able to adequately catch up if they are to add a course two, three weeks into the semester. It puts an incredible burden on these students. But Chris and I are very proud to offer a you know, expanding service learning, Chris has authored $30,000 worth of funding in order to jumpstart this program in its infancy and ensure that our students can not only learn in the classroom, but outside of the classroom and get hands-on experiences that will benefit them later in life. Another thing that we're very passionate about that's unique to our ticket is offering early registration for war veterans. I think we can all appreciate their passion, not only, you know, for the country, but coming back and becoming students, having had that experience in life, and we want to give them the best possible opportunity to receive an education. And another thing is to establish an academic hearing panel for student grade appeals. This currently exists in some colleges in fragmented portions, but we want to expand a uniform system throughout the campus to where you as a student will have the best opportunity to receive the grade you feel like you are deserving.